Welcome to This Week Inside Sim Racing. I'm Sean Cole, and sitting beside me is Darren Ganji, back in the studio. That's right, and real quick, he said This Week Inside Sim Racing. <laughs> We're changing the name a little bit. It was This Week in Sim Racing, but it's like, well, wait a second, we already have the name Inside Sim Racing, so it's This Week Inside Sim Racing. Exactly. And this week inside Sim Racing, we're going to have a lot of stories to, coming to you from around the globe. And these stories are brought to you by iRacing.com. And iRacing.com actually has a very cool event coming up. Big event. It's their inaugural professional race of champions. It's like an IROC race. An IROC race exactly is what it is. Remember, what happened to IROC? <laughs> International race of champions. I, there's like an IROC overseas, but they right. would call it IROC. And it's not like the same format, really. It's like, well, they kind of, it is, but where is the old school IROC? I miss that horribly. I saw that, I saw an IROC race at Riverside. <laughs> anyway, we're getting way off track here. Always my favorite though, and they are doing this true IROC style. I mean, you've got some pro real life racers who are gonna be in this event. Guys like former NASCAR Sprint Cup champion, Bobby Labonte, ALMS GT champion Joey Hand, who I almost got a chance to be a mechanic for once. That's right, you were mentioning that. Yeah. And uh, NHRA driver Ron Caps, Alex Gurney, Scott Speed supposed to be there, Justin Wilson, so ton of real world drivers. I gotta say, I am really excited myself because I get to be in the booth for this race. That's very cool. So, I mean, where are we gonna tune in and listen to that race or watch that race? iRacing.com or PSR TV. PSR TV is gonna be broadcasting it, but iRacing.com, just go there. Our iRacing page will have a link to it at our site. So, big event. This is gonna be, this is gonna be a lot of fun. So just out of curiosity, do you have any idea how many of these guys have like vast sim racing experience versus kind of- Well, like Scott fresh? Speed, I know has run a ton. Justin Wilson. Bobby Labonte used to be like a tester for Papyrus back in the day. Right. Did you know that? No, I had yeah, not. Yeah, he used to run NASCAR uh, Papyrus titles back in the day. Is I, that I how know. he got on the cover? Yeah, as a matter <laughs> of fact, that's, it. Yeah, that's how he did. I think he did a video for them too at one point, but um, yeah, it's gonna be cool. They're gonna be running the trucks. I'll fix setup stuff. Trucks at Charlotte Knight, uh -huh. and that's gonna be for 20 laps. And then they're gonna run the Mazda MX-5 Cups at Watkins Glen for 10 laps. I love it. So just like Race of Champions, going both varieties of racing to kind of see who has an edge on which one. Exactly. Or the guys who are good at both. Yep, about two grand's gonna go to charity. 1,500, the winner uh, gets to pick his favorite charity and it goes to that charity. $500 uh, for the runner up and 250 to third place. So make sure to tune in, iRacing.com and Tim Terry's gonna be the lead broadcaster and I'm uh -huh. gonna be color commentator and Sean Sipp's gonna be our pit reporter. We're gonna Very have cool. live commentary going right. on with the drivers, so. Very cool, Very should, be, cool should be a lot of fun. So tune in Wednesday night, eight Eastern time to iRacing.com or PSR TV. We have the uh, description there, or time in our description, I should say. Well, I will definitely be checking that out. Now the next top story is something that is sitting right here next to me. I mean. Darren's been here the whole time, but you were formerly a full-time employee with Fanatic. Yes, I was. Not well, hold on, let's clarify. Okay. I wasn't actually a, a Fanatic employee. Okay. I was a contractor for Fanatic. But you were still here helping out quite a bit. You were doing some inside some as much as I episodes, could. doing some reviews of non-hardware stuff. Uh, but you've kind of been away full-time and now you are back full-time by my side here at Inside Sim Racing. Oh, absolutely. Back here full-time to stay. I'm not going anywhere. I just missed being a part of this full-time. Right. And uh, Tommy's no longer with us. Jessica's been here just kind of part-time. So lots of stuff coming up in 2012. So definitely need to be back for it. All right, so big question I guess is why? <laughs> I mean, I'm glad you're back. So we get to get back to what we're doing in a big season for 2012, but why? <laughs> well, everyone's um, got to know. You know what? It was a great opportunity, and uh, it just didn't work out. You know, there's sometimes just some things aren't a match, and in this case, we, I wasn't. Um, you know, I, I did a lot. I tried to do a lot. Worked, you know, tons of hours, but uh, and felt like I accomplished a lot for the company. I, I made some videos. The inversion video I did. Cut that BMW video. I love edited that, video. that. Yeah, that was a lot of fun to work on that and helped write their manual for the CSR, worked on their press campaign. Uh, so a lot of the reviews that you may have seen out there for the CSR, I right. uh, was in touch with a lot of those, uh, the media. That was a lot of fun actually, meeting you know, and talking with guys from like Grassroots Motorsports, Car and Driver, 
uh, Engadget. So got to meet some really cool people behind the scenes. So it was cool. So now that you're back here, obviously full time, how are things between you and Thomas? Um, you know, we left on a so-so note. I'm not going to say it was great because uh, it wasn't. Um, but no hard feelings for me. I, I wish Fnatic the very best. And, uh, you know, I, I hope that they continue to, you know, to bring new innovations to our, to our industry. Absolutely. They have some cool looking wheels. So I wish we had one of those cool wheels. So Thomas. Well, we, ha we have a few of them, but we have prototypes that, you know, weren't ready for review or up for review. And, uh, you know, some of the elite, you know, community reviews that actually I helped put together for them, uh, or as, as far as gathering people to review them. Um, but yeah, our, I guess our elite must have got lost in shipping or... Thomas, anyway. hurry up, get us the wheel. We'd love to review it. And everyone out there, as soon as we get one of those, we will review it. Until yep. then, what's next? What's next? Well, next up on the show, uh, there's a new app on the scene for, uh, we've been seeing a lot of these for, for smartphones. Right. Uh, this one's for iPhones or iPad, or I guess it's iOS. Uh huh. So uh, that's their operating system. So any of those type of app running things. Exactly. So it's a, a HUD or heads up display, shows tax and stuff for R Factor. Right. So it's pretty cool from a company called uh, Mighty Gate. I don't have an iPhone. I don't, I don't either. Mine's a Windows. When you guys, I need a Windows app for one of these. That'd be cool. I have a, matter of fact, I got my smartphone right here and I, I'd love to have. They're all for the I something. Yeah. Anyway. So anyway, <laughs> cool app. Uh, you can download it. Uh, we're going to have a link here in the description of our show. It's selling for 159 euro. That's 1.59 euro, okay. by the way. Uh, and it's a plugin. It sends the data to the iOS device using a plugin. Okay. It's available in both English and Spanish and displays various values including RPM speed, lap times and gaps, oil temp, water temp, and actual position. So go to www.mightygate.com to check it out. Very cool. Tell them we sent you. Yeah, absolutely. Tell everyone we sent you. Next up is Forza 4 has finally released a patch. Every video we put out, there's like two, three comments. Forza 4 review. When's the Forza 4 review coming? When's the Forza 4 review coming? And it's coming. You know our rules. Our rules are when they patch it, we'll review it. So we gotta, Yeah, we got to give it a chance to, you know. Fix things like the 900 degree steering bug. Things like that that have been addressed in this patch. The 900 degree wheel was being mapped as a 270 degree wheel, creating a 3 to 1 ratio. The result of this change will be more consistent steering and counter steering. Yeah, and uh, supposedly this makes the physics a little more tougher. Supposedly right. it's a little, we haven't, I honestly haven't tried it yet. We, I downloaded the patches, but I haven't been able to get to it, but, uh, and we will. We're gonna, now we're gonna really put it through its paces. Forza 4 review, it's coming, <laughs> it's like coming. we said. But uh, yeah, supposedly it's harder to catch a slide and it, it requires more input You're because doing a lot more wheeling with that 900 degrees well yeah because it's not a three to one anymore yeah. so you might even want to dial that 900 back right on those uh fanatic wheels the update also introduces some new tools designed to better regulate the forza 4 economy and last on the forza front in this update they are also temporarily removing the ability for certain cars to post times on the leaderboards while they investigate refinements to their performance index system so for now, they're going to wipe those eight cars off the leaderboards and restrict them from posting times, but hopefully they're going to get them back into the mix. Yep. And as far as things for us go on Forza 4, we're hoping to get our review done by the end of the year now that that patch is out. If not end of the year, early next year. Don't want to put a date on yeah, it. Yeah, it is holiday season and all. Exactly. Next up, we have this title's or not title, but mod has been in the making for a long time. These guys have been talking to us uh, in behind the scenes in our forum and stuff and drag factor for our factor is now released finally legitimate drag racing back in sim racing this looks pretty cool yeah it sounds really cool it does it's a standalone r factor mod that includes r factor light and the vehicles and tracks to make a full-blown drag racing sim tracks included are australia's willowbank raceway full throttle raceway and the duke boys drag strip what is it Bow and loop? <laughs> the General Lee? Yeah. <laughs> There's a few other tracks in the works and they will be available soon. The mod is available now. As a matter of fact, I just got a link sent to me and we'll have it in the description here for you guys to check out. And the mod's going to include 15 top door slammer models. This is Aussie, by the way, Aussie mod. So this is like Australian NHRA drag racing. Right. So 
few different makes than we're accustomed to. Exactly. 15 top door slammer models, 65 individual real life race liveries, 28 real life door slammer and pro mod teams, 18 different superchargers and injector hat combinations, 19 types of wheels, three wheelie bar lengths, all sorts of stuff. And you're gonna be able to go head to head uh, via match race over the quarter mile in fully simulated drag racing events in series. You know, we were watching those videos and the speed immersion going down the drag strip was crazy. And I mean, I can't wait to try it out. The shift light flash and all that. Gonna Very be cool. cool. Mods available at dragfactor.net and we'll have a link to that too. Very cool. So that's going to do it for the first half of the show. And speaking of shifting, when we get back, we're going to check out the EC Pro Shift Step 2 shifter, sequential shifter. If you were wondering what this was sitting here the whole time. And that's after a quick break. Open Wheeler is not just another racing seat. It's made with the input of real racing fans who know the mechanics of racing. The Open Wheeler can be used by almost anybody, from a small child to a fully grown adult. Just like the seat in a real car, Open Wheeler has a wide range of adjustable positions, just like a real car, including the angle of the seat up and back and the pedal distance and wheel height. Open Wheeler is super light and only weighs about 50 pounds, and it's really easy to move around the house with its built-in wheels, and it folds down for easy storage. Welcome back to this week inside sim racing and first up on this half of the show we have the sim rig of the week sponsored by Tamiya USA where you can find the hottest models and RC cars in the world go to TamiyaUSA.com and this week's sim rig comes to us from Chris Shaw of Sussex in the UK and he's been sim racing since the early days with Jeff Crammon's Grand Prix, various NASCAR titles, and Grand Prix legends. After many years of desktop driving, he decided to build a rig and put an end to the sliding pedals and wheel. It was actually my 8020 profile rig that inspired his design. Well, we used to call that thing the limo. Wasn't the limo. It? it was a beast of an 8020 rig. It was. Which, by the way, people have asked me for the measurements to that thing. I'm sorry, guys. We had just parted that thing together, <laughs> and I just don't have any measurements. And the final version was inspired from a post in our forum by a guy named Tony D. Using extrusion tubing profile, he made this design. The seat came from a salvage yard and was originally from a Toyota MR2. Once the base of the rig was complete, he equipped the rig with a DFGT and Club Sport pedals in an inverted position. The rig is completely stable with no wiggle at all, and when racing, he slides the rig under his old desk that still holds the monitor, speakers, and other accessories. At this point, he has about 300 British pounds into this whole rig. Right. Pretty cool. But you gotta love 8020 because no wiggle. That's the thing about profile. Says he's really happy with the setup and plans on a new wheel someday and maybe a shifter. Shifter? You don't say. Speaking of the devil. <laughs> Speaking of the devil. Now, this is the EC Pro Shift Step 2. By the way, thank you, Chris, for sharing your rig with us That's before we get to this. Yeah, absolutely. That was really cool. And more. Coming soon here on the Sim Rig of the Week, sponsored by Tamiya USA. And so. post your rig in our forum if you want to see it on the show. Yeah, man, we need we need to see more. And actually, we found some other ones, cool ones at iRacing's forums, mm -hmm. the way I play. So yeah. we'll be looking around out there to find some other ones. So stay tuned. <laughs> so speaking of shifters, we got this from EC Sim Hardware. And these guys reached out to me, um, I believe I've... Uh, this guy, Aneco, mm -hmm. is the guy's name. But they are a Spanish outfit based in Spain. And I honestly, I thought when he said he was gonna send this to us, I thought it was gonna be a shifter. Right. A manual uh, gated shifter. I was gonna say, it is a shifter. I kinda wish it was a manual gated shifter. Cause we just did review a Frex. Yeah. Uh, sequ this is a sequential shifter, by the way. And this is very similar to the Frex in many a way. Yes, it is. Um, goes for right around $200, 150 euro. Mm -hmm. um, 
And again, you can get it from their website. We're gonna have a, a link for it here. So, Sean, since you did the Frex review, mm -hmm. how about if I just ask you some questions about how it compares? Because honestly, I didn't get to drive the Frex that much. You right? kind of ported it to yourself, <laughs> which was fine. Yeah. Um, but uh, this thing looks pretty cool. It's pretty stout. It is, and look. let's start with the look, since you brought it up. Uh, right off the bat, this looks much, much, much cooler than the Frex. And the reason why is, the Frex just had that DIY look about it. Very open, you can see every, all the internals. And I like the way this looks. It's all aluminum encased with these plastic-ish ends. Yeah, much more polished, much um, more polished look. Yeah, and, and even when you're, you're holding it, you kind of feel that, because you can put your arm down on here and it kind of feels like the area where a shifter would be. Um, so the whole thing is a little more shifter looking to me than the frack, so I mean. PC compatible only. PC only. USB. Comes with some mounting brackets that we're not showing here because it makes it a little uh, unbalanced here, so it's nice to have it flat, but lots of mounting holes that are uh, M6 threads. Yeah, that the magic M6 thread, it means just pretty much everything, same as your wheel mounts essentially. So like a, the, when you hard mount a wheel, it's an M6 hardware you're using. Same, the other thing, the clamps they used, if you're using a one inch desk surface, were actually kind of cool, you could move them around, but you needed at least one inch to lock them down. So I was actually trying to do it to a very flat piece of metal, wouldn't work, but all I had to do was drill two holes and I could mount them any way I wanted. So, and I mean any way, you could undermount, overmount, a um, lot of, front and back ability in the mount, so. So let's talk about some other things. There's also a different shift handle. Yeah, this isn't a pen holder, actually. So this is the stubby <laughs> version right here. And you're gonna find a lot shorter a throw when using the stubby. So it's the shorter handle and only one insert or that spacer. That is one long thread. It is, and but check this out. So when we go this variation, now we're talking long shifter. So depending on your style of driving, some people like it like that. The throw, I mean, just the difference between this and this is gonna be hugely different. You can see it. Yeah. And so for some people, depending on the kind of car they're trying to mimic or their particular rig, it might affect the length they wanna do, but you can switch back and forth. Another thing, you do have a little bit of adjustment. I keep talking about the throw and the difference with the length of the knobs or the shifter handles. You have these two adjusters here. Each one independently adjusts front and rear. Very nice. So yeah, uh, comparing it to the Frex, it is a little bit more money, as you mentioned, than the Frex is. However, when it comes to the finished quality look and honestly, the racy look, this looks really, really like real race car stuff. So instead of comparing it to the Frex, why don't we just put it on the rev scale? Okay. Uh, you know, standalone score. Uh, so what, what would you give it? As a reminder, I gave the Frex a nine and you, it is a little pricier, but you're getting a little more for it. It looks so cool. A, a big difference in cosmetics and, and the feel is very similar. I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. I go with that. This actually, to me is, the Frex almost was like a switch. Right. This doesn't feel as switchy. No, it's more like you're hitting a button at the end of this tension and it kind of has a top, top, you know. And I, and I like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I highly recommend it. I mean, sequential shifters at this kind of price are for a certain type of racer. I give it a nine out of 10. Am I recommending it to every sim racer in the world? No, this is the guy who is, again, looking for that elaborate cockpit, mimicking a real car that they might want to run in real life or do run in real life. And, and for those guys, I honestly give it a nine out of 10. I do too. And there's some, uh, these guys make some other products too. I believe they do make a, a manual shifter or a gated shifter, I'm not positive. Yeah. I, I know they make a handbrake. Right. Um, and I think a tack too. Yeah. One thing we didn't really mention are the handles. Uh, we got both and these spacers. I am not 100% sure if when you order it, and their web store unfortunately was down so I couldn't double check and it was a little hard to communicate, but I'm not sure if it comes with both or if that's an add-on for a few bucks probably. You'll be able to tell when you're ordering, I'm sure. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'd recommend it. You know, check them out at EC Sim Hardware. Going about 200 bucks. Uh, I'm not sure if they ship international. That's another thing. Their website is, it's definitely hard. You know, just like, wow, Frex. <laughs> yeah, good you luck. Go to Frex.com and you have to, you can't go anywhere. You have to actually type forward slash GP. But anyway, this is the EC SIM hardware. I'd like to thank Ineco for sending us this unit. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate it. And uh, check it out. It's definitely, if, if this is something that you're looking for, like Sean said, not a must have, but something that if you wanted a sequential shifter yeah it's, it's going to do the job yep
no question. So that's going to wrap up this episode of This Week Inside Sim Racing. Hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure to like us on Facebook. We've mm -hmm. got a, a link on our homepage. And like us, if you're a Facebook member, give us a little like there and yeah. help boost our numbers there if, if you don't mind. And Definitely. Join us on our forums. Lots of uh, conversation going on there. And subscribe to us on YouTube. Definitely. Want to know when our shows are coming out? Actually, we're starting to upload back to iTunes for those iTunes. Man, we keep mentioning iTunes. Uh, and we don't even have iPhones, yeah. but that's why we got away from iTunes probably. Uploading our shows, <laughs> uh, backlog of shows to iTunes. So for those of you that wanted those episodes, those are coming. I'm Darren Ganji. Sean Cole, welcome back. Thank you. Great to be <laughs> back. And thank you, viewers out there, for all the warm wishes to come back. Uh, it was great to see that I'm still welcome here on the show. Uh, but uh, we'll see you soon. Lots of stuff. Oh, we got to tell them what's coming. We got big things coming. Who was in the studio oh, yesterday? We had the coolest day yesterday. One of my heroes, and Darren got to interview him. Who'd you talk to? Brian Heitkotter. What a cool guy. I, we're going to have the interview up this week for sure. I'm going to start editing it. Um, man, what a cool guy. What Wish cool him guy. nothing but the best. And he's here going to have a, we have a full and long interview. It's going to be a standalone show. Yeah, and if you don't know who Brian is, he is the winner of the GT Academy. And this is a guy who beat out 53,000 other virtual drivers. Yeah. He was one of them. Uh, you were one of them, too. Yeah, I didn't really try. You tried a little bit and then kind of... I tried hard, but uh, we'll get back to that. Anyway, we have that interview. Incredible stuff from uh, just a gamer to pro race car driver. So you want to hear about that. Lots of other stuff coming. Sim seat review, Forza 4 reviews coming. Yeah. Don't worry yeah. guys, it's coming. Uh, we got another wheel to review even? Yeah, we got the Mad Cats yeah. force feedback wheel. I'm dying Hopefully to we'll have out. some Fanatic stuff. Yeah. We'll see. Come on, Thomas. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Get over it. Let's go. All right. That's going to do it. That's going to wrap it up. We'll see you guys next time. This week inside Sim Racing, I'm Sean Cole, and we're going to start things off with a few stories. What about me? Sorry, can I start over? What about me? <laughs> what about you? Oil temp, water tap. Blip, boop, beep. <laughs> few other tracks are in the works, and we'll... few other tracks are available. Blip, boop, 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 boop. Few other and displays various. Blip, blip, blip. <laughs> And, okay, so uh, what about on the rib scale? On the ribs, <laughs> the rib scale, the now famous rib scale. I, I no, 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 I'll say, I'll say that again. It's selling for a dollar. It's selling for, it sells for a.